my creative peeps and welcome back to my channel for your take five video for November. Uh, for those of you that have no idea because you're new, the take five is a creative collaboration that me and 11 other lovely ladies host every month and basically the idea is you, you create some type of art piece or creative project using uh, five specific prompts and each month one of the members of the group chooses a prompt and everybody is encouraged to participate and share what they made um, even if you aren't doing the challenge for the specific month um, use the hashtag take five art on both YouTube and Instagram so everybody can see your what you created um, and if you'd like me to see what you created or some of the other ladies um, just tag me because <laughs> I am terrible at checking the hashtag but I love seeing what you guys do so I decided to go a little crazy with my project this month um, so we're just gonna talk about it real quick and then I'm gonna speed up the process and do a voiceover because again this is gonna be crazy I could <laughs> I could make up an excuse and say I'm doing this and going all out because it's my birthday month for November, but that would be a lie. I just like going all out and doing whatever the heck I want all the time. Um, and if you're not new here, then you know that. So this month's prompts were chosen by Anna um, fr at from Anna here on YouTube, and she has Patreon and all kinds of other things. Um, I really enjoy her videos. So her prompts she chose were one, distress stain, two, add a ribbon, three, use black ink, four, add dots, and five, texture paste. Now, I was looking through my scrap bin today and one of the projects I've had on my to-do list for several months now is make a new uh, journal to put my pen pal letters and goodies in. Because um, my other one is pretty much just absolutely stuffed to the gills and I was going through my scrap bin pulling out things to create that journal with and I found this now this is a piece that I did oh gosh several years ago um, I have a larger canvas version of this on my wall I can see it right now <laughs> um, but basically it's like a faux sea thing and here there's texture paste and these little dots and I was like oh I should use this as the cover for the journal and then I was like texture, paste, dots. I'm totally going to make this my take five art challenge. So we're going to make my pen pal journal today. You're going to see how I, um, a little bit how I make soft cover journals. Um, I'm going to use this like gauzy ribbon stuff as the ribbon prompt. And then at some point we'll have to incorporate some black ink and distress stain. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to do this project. I hope that you guys enjoy. Please don't feel like you have to be as ultra and crazy as I am. Even if you just make a little tiny collage in the corner of your planner page for the day, that still counts. So <laughs> you don't have to go all crazy. But anyway, let's get into it. All right, let's get into this ultraness. Um, so what I did for this was create a soft cover journal and how I create my soft cover journals and I use uh, envelopes like mailing manila envelopes for the base um, these just happen to be colored ones but it doesn't matter because you never see the envelope anyway and I wanted to make a spine for this so I used two envelopes the long way I put them um, vertically and then measured two inches and I'm going to stitch the spine so that it overlaps. I also spent some time working out how tall I wanted to be so that I knew how far to stitch the spine down. Um, the final dimensions of the journal were somewhere around like 10 by 6 I think. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm sorry for that horrible noise. Um, it's just, I don't know, my desk creaks sometimes. So let me measure this. Yeah, 10 by six and a half. So it is a huge journal. 
So they just sewed along the spine to secure, you know, the two overlapping envelopes together. And then I'm just gonna fold it. I wanted it to be super flexible. Uh, tiny bit of structure on the spine, but super flexible so that it could expand. It's one of the reasons I really enjoy making the soft cover journals is because they very easily accommodate to my bulky style that I have. It makes it so that the chunk is a lot easier to work with than when it's in like a, a stiff um, spine or cover. So that's what I did. Um, and this turned out being like a crazy, um, a crazy amount of pages. But anyway, so next when I'm making my hardcover journal, you can see I creased the sides there to make kind of the book sides. And then I'm taking this fabric. This fabric is covered in tequila bottles. Um, I knew, I haven't used this fabric. I used it on the Mad Hatter journal, I think that was the first time. I originally got it a couple years ago and I was like, I have to have this because I love tequila. Um, but I never knew what journal I was going to make with it. Um, so this just seemed like a good, a good one to use it for. So I just cut it uh, to be bigger than the actual book itself and then I fold the edges over so I usually try to fold the corners in and make some nice corners um, like you would when you're covering a book. You fold the corner in and you fold the sides down um, so that it all just creates a really nice look and then it doesn't really matter if the edges are even or not as long as they go in far enough because I'm going to cover the inside with paper. So here I am just stitching the sides together. And folding it over as you can see there. I should be almost done. I thought I sped this up like a billion times, but it doesn't appear so, so I apologize. This is a little bit of a long video, but it's me making an entire journal, so you know so there we go cut that off and then i'm going to sew on my ribbon actually so what i did was i took this gauzy ribbon stuff and i cut it to the length i wanted and then i bunched it up a little bit and i just sewed it on the edge here so that it would be nice and secure you can do all of what i'm doing here with glue instead of um stitching but with sewing I don't have to wait for things to dry and it just makes it easy so there's that and you'll see me flipping <laughs> flipping the piece backwards and forwards to do the back stitching I know that most sewing machines have a back stitch button um, so don't leave me a bunch of instructional comments <laughs> I'm not a expert sewer and I know this but I do what works for me um, but this machine is super um, vintage. <laughs> My aunts used to use it to make their clothes when they were little, um, and it's even older than them. So it's not really meant to stitch paper. It does have a backward stitch feature, but I find that the machine just is not happy when I try to do that. So I just don't even bother. I just lift the, lift the presser foot up, flip it around and do my back stitching that way. So I have all that done and now I pulled out a bunch of scraps from the scrap bin <laughs> uh, to make like a patchwork um, liner for this book. So I really, really like how this came out. I just kind of pulled out a bunch of neutral and blue themed type papers and I just did like a patchwork layer thing and I'm gonna sew around each of these. Now, obviously the stitching goes through the front and back cover. So you can see the stitching on the outside of the journal. I usually don't do this with journals that I'm gonna sell cause it looks extra messy, but I really like the look of all like the haphazard random stitching that you can see on the outside of the cover. Uh, because of this so that's what I did you of course could 
stitch these together and then glue that on there so you didn't have that problem. But I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm crazy like that. And I like the, <laughs> I like the haphazard look. You'll also saw a little bit ago me fiddling around with the extra piece of fabric that I was working with. Um, that piece you saw me cut real quick, I just accidentally sewed it at like a little, it was off kilter when I sewed it down, so it made like this bump thing, so I just cut it, because it's on the spine anyway, you're not gonna see that, um, but that's how I solved that issue. Um, and then this piece of fabric here, I'm just sewing into a pocket. It's not the most um, efficient way or secure way of sewing a pocket, but again, I was just, I just wanted to be crazy and patch this together. <laughs> um, so I just kind of folded the raw edge over a tiny bit and sewed the pocket on here so that I have this pocket in the front to tuck in like envelopes of Happy Mail that I need to document. So that they're all in the journal when I need them. So this is what the cover ends up looking like got the ties on it you can see the stitching on the outside and I really like it so then of course I went into pulling my papers out to use inside the journal um, I know I want to use scraps for this journal and I said that but the idea that I had had for this pen pal journal was to make it mostly pockets and there weren't really a lot of big pieces I could make into pockets in the scrap bin itself because they are scraps. So I took a bunch of scrapbooking paper from like a kind of desert themed one and pulled those out to make actual pockets with. I had a bunch of lovely um, pen pals and stuff offer to make me my next um, pen pal journal, but because I had this vision for all the what pockets and stuff, I really wanted to make this one myself. Um, so I pulled out a bunch of vellum from past um, like Patreon mailers and stuff. Usually when I put together the mailer rewards for Patreon, I end up with extra print offs of things, test prints, etc. Um, and they just kind of accumulate in that bin. So I pulled those out. Those two bunny papers are from Erin Duncan. Uh, they're prints she sells and she sent those to me. So she was so sweet to do that. And then I also had cut up a bunch of white long business mailing envelopes because I thought I needed more pockets. Um, and it turns out even without those, I have way too much bulk in the journal to begin with. Um, it's always funny how you feel like it's not gonna be a lot of paper and then you put it together and you're like, holy crap, <laughs> that's a lot. Um, so I just took all those 12 by 12 pieces of paper and because the journal is so big, I didn't have to worry about cutting them to size or anything. I just folded them over to sew pockets out of. And then I did a couple things like put this envelope on here. That's another Patreon mailer extra from the summer and glued that on there. And then I sewed all that off camera because, you know, that would have just been, would have just been crazy <laughs> to watch all of that. Um, so I just sewed a bunch of pockets and now I'm putting the signatures together. I do have an older video of how I put my signatures together. It was a couple years ago I made a junk journal for beginners series, kind of how I, you could make one if you'd never made one before. Um, but the, my favorite video from that series is how I put the signatures together. Um, so I'll leave that series linked uh, playlist linked in a card above so you guys can check that out if you'd like but I just kind of staggered a couple short pieces with all the pockets sometimes um, people just send me like a little note and a nice like ATC card or something uh, that I just stick to like one of those little pieces of paper I don't really need a pocket for it uh, so I wanted to make sure I had some of those in the journal um, and I was really happy that I got to use the papers from Erin Duncan and I had a paper from Crafting Vicky's envelope in there and just all kinds of things that not only were my scraps but that pen pals had sent me or were for Patreon mailers, which are kind of like pen pal mailers, right? Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can head over to Patreon and check out uh, the rewards tiers and you'll see the mailer tier. Um, but anyway, so 
Now onto the prompts. I've done ribbon so far. Um, <laughs> now this is the texture paste dots in distress stain. Now some of you may not know this, but they don't make the distress stain like with the daubers anymore. Um, they had issues with the formula not staying shelf stable depending on your climate. Think they were like smelling bad and some people had moldy ones um, and I had some that smelled bad myself. So um, now they only have the sprays, but they're the same colors. So I just kind of sprayed those on there. I chose like a green, yellow, and purple theme, uh, and I dabbed some of the color off because I don't know, I wasn't like how it, liking how it was turning out. So I took this Jane Davenport paint color in like the, it's like a skin tone, but it looks like sand. Um, and pretty much all of these tubes that I've had have split down the side, and this one split down the side too. Uh, so I gotta use it before it dries out, I guess. So not impressed, would not recommend buying those. Um, I know that's a problem a lot of people have had and they probably have a claim that they've fixed it by now, but for it's like an astronomical amount of money for four little tubes of paint. And the fact that I didn't even get to use them because they split really pisses me off. Um, but anyway, rant over. I am taking that same sand color and kind of rubbing it over the um, dotted beads there to bring them back into the forefront of the piece. And then I tried to use some black ink to make an outline and I hated how it looked. So I decided to cut this up and make it a journal card instead. I originally was trying to put it on the front of the journal, but I just didn't like it. Um, it wasn't doing it for me. So I was gonna make it a journal card and I used this black distress paint to do the back of it and it just did not look okay. I could have tried to do another coat on it but I was like, you know what, screw it. We're just going to back it with some black construction paper. So I'm using the black ink prompt by uh, using a black ink pad to just ink the edges. And then I'm going to stick this down on the black backing. I also decided I wanted to brighten this color up a little, so I'm taking another Distress Stain. This is an Abandoned Coral, and I'm just putting it in there. I don't know why I picked this color. It looks really strange, um, but I pull it together with some stickers, I promise. <laughs> um, so I kind of made it so that maybe it looked like the pink was sitting on top of the ocean and then you know you could see the, maybe it was some coral underneath or something and then you could see the water kind of around it and stuff. I do really like how this card came out in the end even though I absolutely hated it in the beginning. Um, so here I am going through some summary um, stickers and ephemera and I found these puffy glitter stickers that I was given for my birthday a couple of years ago. Um, and it had this coral starfish and the coral seahorse and there was like a little green piece. So I was like, this is perfect. So I put those on there and obviously because of the texture paste, it's not gonna stick. Um, but I just took my tiny attacher and stapled it on and that did the trick. And there we are, you guys. So I just wanted to flip through the finished planner with you guys. Um, if you hear any noise in the background, it's just the heater. So I do apologize, it is cold. But anyway, um, as soon as that card dries, I'm gonna stick it in this pocket here. And I just wanted to flip through this and talk to you. Um, I know this was not really <laughs> Um, a traditional take five and it was very quote-unquote far-fetched or stretched um, but I really did enjoy doing something different and putting this together using my scraps and I hope you guys had fun watching it thanks for sticking with me thank you to Anna for creating <laughs> such um, such interesting and like stretchable prompts. <laughs> I can't wait to start 
uh, putting Happy Meal and stuff in this. If you were one of my pen pals, thank you so much for always being so patient with me. I know it takes me like months upon months to reply sometimes. Um, and I'm like the worst pen pal ever, but I really do enjoy um, sending and receiving mail with you guys. And I'm excited for this to get all chunky. And yeah, so there's our book. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the other ladies below and what they created with the Take 5 prompts. Please tag me in your creations so I can see what you do with the prompts. And I hope you all have a fantastic Halloween. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye.